time for the bell. How many options will you sell? Fire up your platform, get ready to enter. But first, let's get the mindset centered. Hey, hey, let's go. We're not here to gamble, we're here to trade. We follow the plan, that's how we get paid. Testing, trading, have success. Find what works for you and forget the rest. Stats and probabilities is what we're about. Time to dismiss greed and doubt. Focus on the process, not the money. And the profits will flow like honey. Power our live, let's start the show. Come on, trade hackers, get ready to go. Zero day options, time to make bank. Get locked and loaded, then be ready to plank. Hey! What's up, everyone? Welcome to Power Hour Live, Tuesday, November 21st. Hope everybody's getting ready for Turkey Day here in a couple days. Uh, kind of a choppy, slow day as far as market movement goes, which is good for zero DTE. S&P's down 14, NASDAQ down 112, Russell down 22, Dow down 109. Gold and silver both up about a percent. Notes and bonds mixed. Oil flat, natty gas down a little bit. Grains higher. Euro and the pound mixed. And Bitcoin down about one and a half percent. Volatility contracted. VIX down about one and a half percent. Right around 13.23. Yeah, Chiefs, not a good game. Discount, not a good game. We got to learn to catch. So as far as zero DTE today, it's been great. Every single trade has been a winner. Started off with the AM Iron Condor early exit. Booked almost 11% on that one. DKS hit both profit targets. Quiet Lunch hit both profit targets, 40 and 80%. And then my PM Iron Condor just hit 50% right before I jumped on here, so... No current trades on, but all winners. So, hopefully Power Hour can take us home. Yeah, all those were managed on Trade Steward. I do have to still, some of those, use a trailing stop, so I do have to manually work those, but all the entries, at least, and exits are automated. Tranche one, <clears throat> very low premiums, my friends, very low premiums. This may be record low premiums that I've seen for tranche one. So it looks like it would go inverted with the 40s and the 35s or the 30s and the 35s it'll start trying to enter here in a little over a minute Yeah, I definitely, definitely think you got to change your parameters when premiums are where they are now. I'll be working on some stuff over the break this weekend. All right, so order should be coming in starting here in about three seconds. Yeah. 
and went with the straddle, the 35 straddle. In for the 35 straddle. Price just kind of bounced up right perfectly for it to not go inverted. Got filled at five dollars and thirty cents. Yeah, I gotta think that's probably the lowest I've seen for tranche one. All right, let me get my uh let me get my back tests up just to make sure we got the power hour normal day. So 5.30. So 3.20 is what I'm looking for to reduce my stop. Uh yeah, I'll be I'll be looking at different options for the low low volatility. Kelvin, I haven't haven't made any decisions yet. Haven't really dug in too much. Discount you got inverted. I would say at first thought, Kelvin, it's I think it would be more I think I'll be I would probably gravitate more along the lines of entering early, earlier rather than taking profit targets. But that's just, I don't know, without, without digging in, not sure yet. Getting a little bounce, SPX at 45.38. Yeah, reduce size too. I think that's I think that's smart. So let's see, we've had a high today of around 4542-ish. A low of 25. Pretty tight range. Popped a little above the open. Had a little flush below about an hour after the market opened. But pretty holiday choppy. All right, so anybody new here? I know we got some new folks who just joined recently. Feel free to ask any questions in the Zero Live chat channel. 
for Power Hour. I'm getting in three different trades, but a lot of downtime, a lot of time to answer questions. So feel free to post. Let us fill in the gaps for you. I uh, did. <laughs> do you have some voice issues too? Yeah, I was at the game last night. Welcome, Benji. Uh, White Tiger, I just recently started trading with Trade Steward a couple weeks ago, so I'm still working through some of the nuances. Uh, once I get through that, uh, I'll be I'll start to put out some videos and kind of stuff of the way that I do it for the for my training and I can share the bots and things like that. But I got to I got to work through things before I start sharing things so I don't share the wrong info with you. Yex catching a little bounce up to almost 45, 40. Oh, no chat from Crush. Who am I going to make fun of? Looking at some of the other markets on the sectors. GDX up almost 3%. Healthcare green, biotech green, consumer staples green. Retail slightly red. Regional banks down 2%. Semiconductors down almost 1.5%. Oil and tech down a little bit. Baidu and Tesla up over two and a half percent. PayPal down two and a half. I uh, I'm in the process of reading Elon Mu uh, uh, Elon Musk's bio book from Walter Isaacson. It's pretty good. I'm only about a quarter of the way through it, but pretty interesting. A lot of things I was not aware of. Just reminded me because I was looking at PayPal, which he was one of the original PayPal folks. Crunch one's trading at 760. My stops at 930. Need a little pullback back in the range. Uh MBK. So the uh so the power hour trading core. So I'm I'm trading power hour a little bit differently than I uh, was from that course. So if you, what I do is at the end of each month, I put out the, I put out my plan for how I'm going to trade the different strategies one month at a time. So if you check the trade plans channel and then check for November, you'll see exactly what I'm doing for November. So what you'll find with zero DTE is a lot of the courses are just, are kind of a foundational you know, core way to trade it. And then in the trade plans is where I was kind of, you know, as we get new data coming in, as we find new little nuances about different strategies, you know, I'll kind of tweak those, but then I'll trade them the same way one month at a time.
Does that make sense? MBK? Also in the trade plans channel, if you haven't been in there, that is a gold mine of, of uh, info with all the different uh, members who have presented their trade plans. So much good stuff in there. Yeah, welcome, Jake. One M. Glad to have you. Vix hit a low of thirteen point one three today. Heading. Towards that low we saw back in September of 12.68. Yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Yeah, you'll see that during holiday weeks like Thanksgiving or Christmas. Or even if even if the market's down a little bit, volatility is just going to be contracting. One of the reasons I did not trade any calendars this week. Yeah, MBK, so there's different depending on the movement coming up to power hour. So if it's kind of a choppy, what we call a normal day, like today, we trade. I trade it one way. If we are up on the day, I trade it a different way. And we're, if we're down on the day, I trade it differently. That's something I just started doing this month. Kind of segmented it into the type of type of price price action day it is. SPX trying to pop back up. By the way, too, if you're new. And if you haven't traded zero DTE much, or even if you have, <clears throat> I mean, this is a really good period to just learn, kind of practice with SPY or very small, because it it definitely is easier to make money when implied volatility is high, right? When the VIX is 18, 20, you know, that kind of level or higher, much different ball game. This when when volatility is as low as it is right now, it's much more difficult. So <clears throat> just keep that in mind as you're starting to learn <clears throat> learn the ropes and figure things out. It's a good good time to be spending more time learning rather than trying to force force uh, force trades. Welcome back, White Tiger. Yeah, you know, I mean, we've got so much content now. I mean, we've been doing this since 2016. So when you come in new, you might be, you might definitely feel overwhelmed. But just one step at a time, just, you know, you don't, you don't have to, you don't have to learn it all in one day. It's just. As you go, you're going to learn new things. It's just a culmination of all of the things that we've continued to learn as a group. So it's it's a pretty awesome kind of mastermind group. But yeah, I can understand it looks a little overwhelming when you first when you first join. Uh, Benji, you can check out the. Uh, the trade plan for the different morning ones. I, I do trade them a little bit differently on different days. For example, today on Tuesday, it doesn't, it doesn't back test well to hold it later. So for Tuesday, I just do a quick early exit. So I'm only in the trade for less than 30 minutes. Um, that's what I did today. Uh, for other days, I trade them a little bit differently. For example, on Mondays, I, I go bigger size because we get that little volatility pop on Mondays. 
and they test the best by far. Uh, and then, and so you'll you'll see in the plan, you know, kind of the, if if you just look at the back test, it gives you all the criteria for each one and kind of the filters and things like that. But um, you know, like Monday, I don't use any kind of any kind of filter. I'm I'm trading it right at the open on Monday every Monday. But other days I want to, I want some type of volatility filter so that I, you know, if volatility is contracting, uh, before the open, uh, sometimes that filters out trade. So yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit different on different days and different situations. Welcome, Talon. Yeah, we don't we don't do any one on one coaching. I just I really, frankly, just don't have the capacity to do so, which is why we we structured it the way we did so I could help as many people as possible with the uh, you know the courses that can be watched on demand, and then we do these live streams to kind of help fill in the gaps on on anything you're you're trying to figure out. But you're more than welcome to use this uh, use these live streams as a coaching type session. Uh, White Tiger Trade Steward does not do paper trading. Tranche two coming up in a couple minutes. My bot will start trying to enter at 113 and 30 seconds. So a little over one minute from now. Uh, Otto, I have not found really any value in VIX 1D. I mean, just it starts low and it goes up every day. So I haven't, I haven't really. I do watch VIX 90 because it's you know, Vic, the regular VIX measures the at the money 30 day options of SPX. VIX 90 measures the at the money nine day options of SPX. Um, and so, you know, obviously nine days is closer to zero DTE than 30. So I, I do look at that, but the VIX 1D, I just, I just have not found any, anything useful of how to use that for anything. See, it just, it starts low and it grows every day. Like, Sometimes it grows more than more than others, but you know, I just there's not really a whole lot to extract from that that I'm aware of yet. Uh, opt for dollar. Did you figure out the TS change error? I'm not sure what you're referencing. Here comes tranche two. Build at 435 on tranche two. And that's the 4540 straddle. So I'm in the 35 straddle for tranche one and the 40 straddle for tranche two. Oh, like if I'm trying to change my stop? Is that what you're saying? I think you would have to change your bot so that it only does the entry and then you set up your OCOs and toss or you... Um, Disable, disable the bot in uh, in trade steward is kind of what I'm gathering.
Yeah, that's right, White Tiger. Yeah, anytime you're trading an iron condor, you don't want price to move. And we've just, we've found a lot of different kind of nuanced situations where we have a higher probability of that happening than, than not. Uh, GT, there's uh, no automations that I'm aware of that connect to Tasty. Trade Steward won't because they claim that Tasty discloses personal login information to them and they don't want that they don't want that um if you have ib there's trade automation toolbox that connects to interactive brokers uh trade steward is working on a deal with tradier so hopefully that's done soon i will i'll definitely be utilizing that Oh wow. Yeah, that's not that's not good discount. SPX still hanging around 4540. I would take a 4540 pin today. And then, of course, uh, TD purchased by Schwab. So Trade Steward is going to be obviously trying to get everything set up with Schwab. But Schwab hasn't even released their API yet. So they haven't been able to get that done. My uh, TD accounts are scheduled to switch over to Schwab sometime in 2024. I haven't gotten an exact date yet. and P's down 10. S&P futures, anyway. I did not trade any futures today. Just did not see anything that I liked. Tranche three coming up in about five minutes. I don't, I don't really trade anything Dark Avenger based on a seasonal trade. Nice, Michael Todd.
though. NVIDIA after the bell today, huh? It's been on quite a rip from about 392 up to five, over 500 in uh, just a few weeks. What are you doing, Dark Avenger? Are you taking anything? So let's see, Trunch two. Got filled at 435. So I would reduce my stop on trying to at 261. 260. You're just saying the day before Thanksgiving is typically bullish. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I'm going to play the. Uh, I, don't pl I don't think I'm going to play the Nvidia. If I did, I would play it to the upside, but. I think I will pass. Expected move is a little about thirty three and a half bucks. So to about five thirty three down to four sixty seven. Okay, interesting discount. One minute till tranche three. Tranche three looks like it's going to be the 40, 40 straddle. And here comes tranche three. Filled at 635 on the 40 straddle. And that's two to one, two to one ratio. All right. 40 is the sweet spot. Well, looks like Discount and Trader Bianca are following the same same Twitter folks.
Yeah, you get a little pullback in SPX down to 45.38. Adam Mancini. Name sounds familiar, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure I've I know who that is. Super talented, futures genius. At least it's not fair to look up this guy. Those are some good uh good compliments. Man, we just got a little, little volatility pumped into our pumped into our trade, didn't we? Maybe it's just kind of jumping around. Uh, GT, I just, I found it works better. I found it works better when you have a, uh, just kind of a choppy or what I call a normal day. And it, you know, anecdotally, I, I kind of, it kind of made sense to me because I think, you know, when we're just kind of directionless, just kind of chopping around, we tend to kind of just gravitate higher towards the end of the day. Yeah, for the normal day, correct. So I'm looking at all three tranches on my risk graph here. Tranche one is this one. So price is right here. So tranche one is at the 35 strike, so that would benefit from a little bit of a down move. And then my other two are both on the 40 strike. So I just I usually just look at all of them together. <clears throat> a lot of times you're sharing a strike, like I am with two and three. Well, a lot of times when there's low implied volatility, anyway. Yeah, so for monitoring, you can watch the risk graph, White Tiger. Or the other, th <clears throat> the other thing you can do is um, go to your activity and positions, and then you can monitor it here to kind of get an idea of where it's. You look at working orders, and you can look at, you know, where the where the price is in real time. And I don't, you know, I, I'm using the bot, so I don't have my stops in here. But if you put in an OCO using the toss order templates, you'd also see your stop and your and your profit targets in here. For me, I'm I'm I've got this on another monitor, so I'm, I'm kind of monitoring it this way as well. You know, so tranche one's up seven and a half percent, tranche two's up thirteen percent, and tranche three is well, now it's down a little bit. So those are the kind of the three screens that I use for monitoring power hour.
risk graph and then trade steward if that's you know going to be part of your plan and then the uh, monitor tab Um, so the downside of the bots is all, they don't have all the features that we need yet. You know, they don't have trailing stops. If you adjust your stop, you can't adjust it above below where you open the trade. <clears throat> so in that case, I basically need to cancel it in the bot and then set up an OCO in, in toss. Um, you know, there's, uh, so that, that, that's probably the main thing is just, you still have to, depending on what kind of back test or what kind of plan you're trading on a specific strategy. There may not be all the capabilities to fully automate it with the bot. So, um, whereas if you use the toss templates, you can kind of set that up however you want. I, I, I like the bots from a perspective, the way that I use them is, you know, People, a lot of people come in and they, they want to automate things. So they, you know, think they can just kind of set it and forget it. That's, that's definitely not how I think about automation. I look at it more from a perspective of just, um, you know, setting up your criteria and then putting it in so that you, you're making less mistakes. And once we get some of these other features, it'll be nice too. But it is it's very easy to manage the stop in trade steward as well. So for example, on tranche one, when I get to 40%, which it'll be displayed right here, then I can just go in here and edit my stop. Change stop, plug in the new value, hit change, and it's done. And then set so that updates. SPX coming down. Gonna need to stay above 35, between 35 and 40, please. Preferably closer to 40, yes. Yep, if there's no bid on the uh, on the longs, it'll just close the shorts, which is cool. If there is a bid on the longs, it'll it'll sell them for you. And there's there are different settings that you can do that or not do it. You can you can kind of adjust that. If there's no bid on the, oh on the shorts. Hmm. That's a good question, Meech. I hadn't really thought about that. Big K, do you know? Or discount or anybody else that's been botting? Thanks, Ryan P. <laughs> the answer wasn't great.
SPX hanging around 45, 36, 24 minutes to go. All right, so Tranche 1 likes this level, but Tranche 2 and 3 could use a little bounce. All right, Ryan P., let me get this over here. If I'm in a short straddle and one of the legs goes bidless, do you try to close the one leg that has a bid? Answer, shorts are never abandoned like longs. Too dangerous. Ryan P said, okay, but one of the shorts goes bid list, then you won't be able to close the position. Do you close each peg like independently? You can always buy to close. Yeah, okay. I think that's about as good as you can good as you can get. Uh, probably around 5,000 white tiger, but it, it completely depends on the width of your strike. So easiest thing to do would be just model it in toss, set it up on the analyze screen and, and, or, you know, hit confirm and send once you pick the widths of your wings. And, um, that'll give you the best idea. So, for example, so your, your buying power requirement is the width of your wings, of your widest wing, minus the credit received. That's your buying power. So I can't really give a good example because we're, you know, 20 minutes away from expiration now. But if I go out to like the one day options, for example. And let's say these are zero DTE and price, you know, we're trading pretty close to the money. So I go here and then I go 10, 20, 30, 40 wide, for example. And then I go here. Let's say we're doing a straddle, which is normal right now. I go 10, 20, 30, 40 wide here. You know, obviously you're not going to get that kind of a credit tomorrow, but the width will allow you to see a little little skewed but then you can you can see just visually what the buying power is you know for this one it's 1900 cuz i went uh yeah I went 40 wide on the call side if I do 40 wide on the put. But again, you won't be getting this big of a credit either, so it'll be more, but that'll give you kind of a ballpark idea. Still no stop reductions. Takes a while with straddles. 
tranche one's at 21%, tranche two's at 10. Yeah, Jake, when I, um, you know, when we first started trading these, a lot of us and and some still do, you know, take, take profits at certain levels. But what we've found is, um, yeah, if you can hold it till the end of the day, over time, overall, over many occurrences, your, your profit's going to be better. So you're going to, I mean, you're going to have situations where you have a really nice profit and then it goes away and gets stopped. And that's, that's part of it. So it's a, you know, it's a mental, it's a mental thing. You got to build your, build your mental discipline around it too. But that's, uh, that's what we do. SPX up to 45.37. I'm using Google Chrome. It's working fine for me. I think it's another one of those Chris issues. The old Chris issue. Chris issue. Yeah. Must have been them. <laughs> he knows what make it fun of him. All right, a little over 15 minutes to go. Tranche one's at 370. I need it down to 320 to reduce my stop. Yeah, reducing stops with straddles. It usually comes down to the last 10 or 15 minutes. How long do you think it'll be until Chris asks about the market on closing balance for the day? <laughs> He's about due. He's about due. Chris. 
Early indication, 67 million sell side. <laughs> front one getting close currently trading at 350 <laughs> All right, hanging around thirty sevens. So tranche one's up 33%, tranche two up seven, tranche, tranche one up 33, tranche two up seven, nine, tranche three down a little bit. Tranche two, I would reduce at 260. It's currently trading at 340. Price would need to push up right under the 4540 for that one to get close. Volatility popping up a tiny bit here in these last 30 minutes or so. Tiny bit. Teeny tiny. Climbing up towards 40. Trunch 2 trading at 285. I need 260. All right, there it is, 260, so changing my stop. Tranche two.
So what I had to do there is, um, <clears throat> so when I got down to 260, I was reducing it to a $2 stop. So I have to do 25 cents over the opening credit, which was 435. So that would, it would equal 460 is now my stop for tranche two. Tranche three now up 38%, tranche two up 43, tranche one, which is the lower 45, 35 strike, still positive, but that's good. Eight minutes to go. Just hang right here, little buddy. Just hang right here. Final market on close and balance, 236 million buy side. That's right, Dick. You got to talk to him. Tell him what he wants to hear. Call him your buddy, your pal, whatever it takes. Yeah, that's kind of nice. When I was, I was driving, to, driving to Louisville last week, I was cruising through St. Louis, just had trade stewards sitting on my phone, watching it and watching it do my power hour for me. I didn't realize my, uh, my Audi has basically autopilot. So <laughs> I just got to touch the steering wheel about every... 30 seconds. Uh yeah, White Tiger, I don't have a date because I I just I just want to spend some time going, you know, having it cycle through different trades before I just so you know when different things happen, I want to make sure I understand how to like like there's still some things I need to work out on changing the stop loss if I got to change it under the open so there's there's still some things I got to work out All right, a little above 4540 closing in on 5 minutes till the bell All right, so I'm going to go ahead and bail on tranche one here at five minutes till. Build at 5.05 on tranche one. I'm going to go ahead and take off tranche number two as well. Bounce back up there. Give it a little bounce back up. Tranche two closed at 245. I still have tranche three on. I left tranche three because this is the two to one ratio. I was hoping for a little continuation higher, but it went the wrong way. Uh, it's moving towards the break even now. Three and a half minutes to go. It's 
not giving me the bounce I was wanting. Get back up to 40. Get on back up. Three minutes. Three minutes, three points. Let's go. It's going to take me out at 58 at two minutes till the bell. So I'll just let it go. Another 45 seconds. Come on, a little bit higher, buddy. A little bit higher, little buddy. All right, so my order should start coming in right now to close. I thought I had this one set at 58. Could be wrong. That was off memory. No, I did not. All right, so I got to close it. Nice little bounce. Trying to get filled to exit. Canceling, replacing. Filled at 310. All out. All winners. Look at this. Started off the day with my AM trade quick quick exit winner, 10 per eleven percent. DKS hit both profit targets. Quiet lunch hit both profit targets, 40 and 80 percent. PM Iron Condor hit my 50 percent profit target. Tranche one, small winner. Tranche two was the bigger winner. And tr no, tranche three was the biggest. Well, dollar wise, percentage wise, tranche three was the biggest. Dollar wise, tranche two was the biggest. So, yeah, good day. That helps. Uh, after yesterday was a little bit brutal. All right, my friends. Good day for power hour. Uh, live stream wise, tomorrow morning, Chad will be streaming at the open. And then we will be doing our last live stream of the week for Power Hour. All right, guys, have a good day, guys and gals. Good night. Chat with you soon.